Welcome back, everyone. Toysh is here, and I am back yet again to give you guys another early, fresh look, courtesy of my friends over at Jazzwares. And I'm very excited because today we're going to be looking at some of their brand new Star Wars Micro Galaxy Squadron toys. Think of this 196 scale ships and little people to put inside them. It's going to be awesome. So, we're going to be looking at four different classes today. You got Scout Class, Light Armor Class. Starfighter class, and of course, transport class. Now, there are larger versions, such as the Millennium Falcon. You also got Boba Fett Starship. But just for today, we're going to be looking at these four different classes. And we're going to jump right into it. No introductions, nothing like that. We got a lot of Star Wars to cover. So, now we have these blind boxes. This is in the Scout class. You got a number of different figures to collect. You got chases as well. I'm not a huge fan of blind boxes. I'm going to tell you that right now. Here's the barcode if you'd like to look at it. And lo and behold, it turned out it was the exact same Scout Trooper that I originally got when I received one of these at Star Wars Celebration. But it is very cool. You kind of start building up an army of scout troopers on the speeder bike and he does look good they are painted nicely i like that they include a stand so it does look like he's hovering you can pop him off and put him on this end and if you like hey if no one's around zip him around your room you know what i mean making noises and all that so it is very cool nice start to the whole micro galaxy squadron and like i said if you start getting more blind boxes and you end up with two of them, like I have so far, well, yeah, you can start cruising around Endor in style. Or heck, maybe kidnap Baby Yoda, something like that. There is a chase variant of this with Baby Yoda in the backpack, just saying, and, uh, you know, you get the whole chicken walker thing going. It's going to make for a nice photo. So, to move on into the light armor class with the TIE Fighter, the classic TIE Fighter right there. It comes with a TIE Fighter pilot. I may have mentioned this before, but uh, yeah, one of my favorite Power of the Force figures was the TIE Fighter pilot. I always liked that. He was very shiny black. It's very cool. Here is the barcode for the TIE Fighter because, of course, lo and behold, here is the TIE Fighter with said TIE Fighter pilot all out of the packaging. And it's just every bit as awesome as I remember as a kid enjoying Star Wars. That's really a lot of the nostalgia hits with these, is a lot of the reminiscing. It's the classic Star Wars, and I really do appreciate that. That coupled with a lot of 90s action. You know what I mean? So you get the little TIE Fighter pilot right here. His legs and arms move, so you can sit him right into the TIE Fighter. And he's painted well. He's got a little bit of paint for little TIE Fighter pilots, but the TIE Fighter itself... See, this is what I like about these, right? First and foremost, it is a miniaturized version of something you'd expect from, say, Power of the Force. And it does reduce a lot of space, right? You can have a lot of these things, and they're all in scale with one another. So that really is another extra bonus. Plus, just like, let's say, old 90s Power of the Force, action figures in general, you can disassemble the TIE Fighter, and it just kind of turns into like a battle damage TIE Fighter if you want. Perfect for taking photos and you pop open the cockpit right there and you can see inside it. There is a lot of detail to these tiny ships and that's another one of the great aspects of these. It's very, very tiny, but there sure is a heck of a lot of detail. Even looking inside, you can see the control panel, you can see the back with the engine and everything else, and that opens and that opens, and there's a little button right here, which I'll show you what that does in just a second. But you grab the wings and reattach them, and they go on easy peasy, and they stay on. You set the TIE Fighter pilot in there, pull that down, and you're now ready to zoom across the universe in a TIE Fighter squadron, right? Very cool. Zooms all over. I love the noise that a TIE Fighter makes. That would have been really cool to put some electronics in these, right? But right here where this button was, like I said, you push that, and it basically, in so many ways, allows you to really kind of pop the guy out. I like just turning it over and flipping him out, but it's nice that they included that. That way... You don't have to go digging in there. So, if a TIE fighter and a TIE fighter pilot is right up your alley, yeah, I would say that this will float your boat. It's very cool to see. Very nice to see. Basically, and I'll show you this later in the video, little teeny tiny action figures with little teeny tiny ships. They all go together and they all scale well. It's definitely a very cool looking TIE fighter. Now, moving on, you know how I said, I'm like, you know, I really like the old school original Star Wars. Well, there are some aspects to the, the prequels and offshoots in the cartoons, like Asajj Ventress's ship right here. That is actually 
pretty darn cool. This is the Genovex Starfighter, and it's one of those ships where, off the top of my head, I couldn't tell you what it looked like. But now that I see it, I go, oh, yeah, that's a Saj Ventress's ship. Very nicely done. And once out of the package... It's a very interesting ship, a very prequel-ish ship, but dang it all if it doesn't look good, especially Asajj Ventress. Now, this is one where you have to say, well, they're teeny tiny. Can you really expect them to leave out lightsabers or have removable lightsabers? Maybe one day, but she does permanently have her lightsabers in hand. She's got the articulation in the arms, and she's nicely painted for what is there, and it has a stand for her Genovex starship. So Star Wars right there. I'm going to tell you right now, I'll point this out. I wish a couple more of these ships that we're going to look at had that stand. Because the Genovex starship is pretty darn cool. From the honeycomb orange reflective. It's kind of like a, a bicycle reflector. You know what I mean? It's got guns. It's got the cockpit. It's nicely painted. The cockpit opens up. And of course, you can sit old Asajj Ventress in there, but I just really like overall, it's it's really the fun of putting all these together, popping out the figures, putting them in, you'll see the little peg holes right there, that's where his fixes to the stand, so you grab Asajj Ventress and you stick her in there, lightsabers ignited and all, right, extra ignition, and then you just close the cockpits and it looks awesome, and the best part is the wings unfold, and that looks fantastic i love the way that that came out and again like i said it's miniature it's not going to take up a whole heck of a lot of room on your shelf in your collection so if you're just kind of getting into star wars yeah this might be a great jumping off point and you could put it right back on the stand now one thing i would have liked to have seen while on the stand i wish you could unfold the big old honeycomb wings right Asajj fits in there nicely, she looks good, but yeah, just with the honeycomb wings, you could kind of put it up, you can kind of get it in a position, uh, a flying stance, something like that maybe later to kind of expand this universe would be really cool, just saying, but really nicely done and looks great on the stand as well. So, moving on, we still have one more left to go in the light armor class, this is the ATST with the ATST pilots. Or how I've always called it, the chicken walker, right? That looks awesome. And again, what is really cool is now, with the exception of the old 90s action fleet and all that kind of stuff, these truly are in scale with one another. Even the little Star Wars people, as you'll see. But yeah, the ATST pilot looks great standing next to his big old chicken walker, ATST. And I love, once, I'll show you in just a second, but I love how they have really applied the paint, especially to this guy. This one by far, for as tiny as he is, has some fantastic paint on this guy. The black gloves, the green helmet, he's painted beautifully, so gotta give it to him all day. The chicken walker itself has a lot going on, and I'll tell you right now that it's very, very detailed out. I mean, everything is there that you would expect in the schematics of these things. It's blueprints, brought to life. So I love seeing that. It's got a wash all over it, makes it dirty. Like the wings of the TIE Fighter, you can twist this little gun turret right here, or if you want, maybe you got blown up by an Ewok or a couple of logs on strings or whatever the heck that was. The articulation in the legs is very well done. It's very sturdy from the feet to the more, let's say, knuckle joints and everything else on this thing. It stands you can have it crouched down, you can have it at long gates, it's very cool, and it just stays upright, which is everything you want it to be, except if you're a bunch of Andor Rebels, yeah, you want this thing tipping over ASAP. Now with the top, simply just open it up just like that. Again, the detail continues, you got a wash inside, brings it all out. This is more of a one-seater, I'm sure you could put two in there if you really wanted to, but this is a one-seater chicken walker, and you could put the ATST pilot inside, close it up, and bingo, bango, you got yourself one cool-looking piloted chicken walker right there. Even twisted right there. They're creepy looking, right? Fitting name, chicken walker. I'll just tell you that. But I just love it. I have always loved these little things from the power of the force now down to these little miniatures. And again, I'll tell you, I think the ATST pilot is one of the best painted little minifigures yet that we have to look at. He fits in really nicely with the chicken walker. He just, this is a very fun set. Evokes all the emotions, all the nostalgia of those old micro machines, and they do it quite well. And plus, I'll tell you all day, I wouldn't mind seeing a battle damage version of this thing later on. Complete with the logs, right? 
Moving on, we are now going to the Starfighter class, and you can pretty much guess where we're headed with these types of vehicles. So this one in particular is Luke Skywalker's X-Wing with R2-D2. Now keep in mind, there are going to be rare instances of variances on the ships, maybe variances on the figures. So keep a sharp eye when you start to see these starting to hit in around August of this year. Because here is Luke Skywalker, R2-D2, and the X-Wing taken out of the packaging. And this one, if I talked about the TIE Fighter and I talked about the Chicken Walker, I mean, the X-Wing is just classic. Look at this little R2-D2 right here. Now, I will tell you, it would be nice to get a little bit more paint here and there. It's very simplistic. It's a very simplistic, tiny figure. It does the trick. He has a little peg hole on the bottom for when you want to sit him within the X-Wing. Yeah, you could definitely do that. Luke Skywalker, yes and no. I mean, you could tell me this is Luke Skywalker all day. It's a guy in an X-Wing gear, basically. But, you know, when you got an X-Wing going and you need an X-Wing pilot... Whoever must be underneath that helmet, right? Well, you got a very cool looking ship. And much like the Chicken Walker, they continue on with that really cool wash that they got going on. You can see all the inner workings, the bits and pieces, the circuitry, especially on the back. I love the engine burn, right? I recently saw an episode of Adam Savage's YouTube channel where he's talking about the burn on top of the Razor Crest that he painted for Hasbro. It's nice to see that. I know what that is now. Very cool, right? It's got the landing gear and you just sort of pop these up and they go right in there. And I love that they added those. That's very cool. The button right here, just like the TIE Fighter, it's got a little button where you can push the figure out. I'll show you how that, all that works in just a second. The cockpit lid goes right up right there. And again, very nice detail. Not much of a steering, not much buttons, not much of anything inside, we'll just say, except for a seat. But it does a trick when you want to put old Luke Skywalker in there. He's going to make a Death Star run coming soon. Close the cockpit. And bingo, bango, you put old R2-D2 in there. And he is ready to fly around. Maybe he's taking a trip to Dagobah. I don't know. You can go wherever you want in this sucker. And like I said, the button on the very bottom elevates R2-D2 out. I like that. It doesn't need to be there. But it's there. And I love it. And then when you're ready to go into attack positions like N64 Rogue Squadron. Yep. The wings are activated and you're ready to blast some lasers. I love the way that that works. You simply just grab the two little engines right there and push and it pops open. And I love toys like that. It's so simplistic, but it does the trick all dang day. So very awesome. Very, very good attention to detail on this X-Wing. I love that you could put the pilot in there. I love the little effect for R2-D2. The paint on it is fabulous. So of all the ones you got to grab, you got to get... Luke Skywalker's X-Wing. And for all you photographers out there, these are great for, well, photography, right? There's a lot of practicality here, and I enjoy that. It's not going to take up a lot of room. You got these little mini ships, you got these little mini pilots, but you can definitely have a lot of fun in concocting the environment. So definitely, definitely test that out. Take some good pictures. Send them my way if you want. Email them to me. I would love to see them because with this Micro Galaxy Squadron, yeah, you're definitely going to have a lot of fun. Moving on. Well, remember Kenobi? That just came out. Well, Kenobi had his old Starfighter, and he came with a little droid R4P17. And it's totally straight out of the prequels. So this is Obi-Wan's Jedi Starfighter. Part of the Starfighter class. And of course, here is the barcode for when these start to hit stores and you want to scan them. Because once you got Obi-Wan out of the packaging, you see packaging is actually pretty loaded. There's a lot in there, especially with the extra light speed jumper. But you do have this little droid. Now, it's basically a clone of R2-D2, much like all astromech droids, right? But this one has some brown and gray paint, does the same trick. It's the same thing as R2-D2. Obi-Wan is Obi-Wan Kenobi. I mean, yeah, he's the prequel Obi-Wan, kind of, sort of, Kenobi Disney Plus-ish, kind of, sort of. We'll just say he's got that yellow Jedi robes with the brown boots. But uh, yeah, for Ben Tiny, he's okay. And then you have the light speed jumper right here. That's actually painted quite nicely. It's something you do assemble yourself. It takes like two seconds. Don't worry about it. But it's got really nice greens and yellows. It's got a nice wash with the red. It's very cool. And I remember this. They kind of hook up to it, which, yes, you'll be able to do all that with this Obi-Wan Starfighter. You see it attaches right there to the front of the Starfighter. But everything is painted nicely. There's no slop to this. It's just very crisp all the way around, especially on the Starfighter. 
And as you can see, the little imperial symbol right there on the wing. Lots of browns, some greens, some very cool maroon reds right there, browns. Very awesome. And it's got the little push button, of course. Now, just like the X-Wing, there is some landing gear, which you can pop out. And that's pretty cool. Although, I will show you in just a second. As the Saj Ventress's ship did have the base, I really wish this one had one. It's got the little button right here on the bottom, which you could push, and allows you to pop out the R2 unit at ease. Now, right here, you pop open the cockpit. It goes forward instead of back. You can see all the details inside the cockpit itself. Quite a bit more, right? Got a little bit more controls, a little bit more going on than some of the other ships that we've looked at thus far. But you grab the R4 unit and put him right in there. If I said R2 earlier, I totally meant... R4, don't even worry about it. Grab Obi-Wan Kenobi and close the cockpit hangar and bingo bingo, you're ready to take off and go fight, I don't know, General Grievous. Sure, why not? But you can see right here, you push the button and it pops the R4 units in and out just like that. Pop the landing gear down. And like I said, you can hook up with the light speed jumper right here and it simply just kind of attaches. Now, I will tell you this, go easy until you kind of figure it out. It's easy once you do, but I was afraid that I was pushing it in the wrong way and stuff like that. So just be careful when it's fixing it, but it goes on there really nicely and you're ready to hyperspace jump your way around the galaxy. So again, this is really one of those where I think that a stand would have benefited this. Yes, it has the landing gear when it's not attached, but I would have really liked to have attached and displayed it just like that. Maybe something in the future, a large stand or a pack of stands would be great. Because yes, if you want, you can use the Asajj Ventress stand and finagle it on there and it looks great all propped up, ready to roll. Pack of stands, something like that later down the road would be beneficial for some of these larger ships when you want to attach everything. But I really do like the little figures and Obi-Wan Kenobi is ready to say, hello there. And you can't have Obi-Wan Kenobi without Darth Vader. And this is one of my favorite ships. I still have the Power of the Force one. This is Darth Vader's advanced TIE fighter. And I always liked the way his ship was different. He needs a different, more terrifying looking TIE fighter. If they want to make the TIE bomber eventually, that is actually one of my favorite ships as well. But here is Darth Vader and his advanced TIE fighter taken out of the packaging. And it's every bit as cool as you would expect. You get a little tiny Darth Vader. This is one where I would have expected just a little bit more paint on the guy, to be honest with you. But you can see how he scales with his TIE Fighter right there. It just really stands out. Now, with the Darth Vader figure, yes, would have loved some more paint on him. But he's still pretty menacing as a little teeny tiny action figure, right? <laughs> Just like all the other miniature figures, he has minimal articulation in the legs and the arms. Now, you're probably thinking, well, how am I supposed to fit him inside this ship with this giant cape, right? Well, he doesn't have his lightsabers out like Saj Ventress, but you can take the cape off. Kind of like old action figures of Darth Vader, right? So that's kind of cool. It's a little nod to the old-fashionedness of Star Wars, and I totally dig that. So... You grab the TIE Advanced and you start zooming around, looking at it, seeing all the details of it. And it totally starts bringing me back to the 90s Power of the Force days. I absolutely love that. Maybe I'll do a retro shiz on that one of these days. But the detail is great. Now, I do think that a little bit of a wash would have been great. It's got the button on the bottom so you can get Darth Vader out, right? So you pop the top of this open and you can see inside the cockpit. It has a chair. It has some controls it's perfect for Darth Vader, right? So you can see just every which way, yes, the detail goes on and on for these tiny little figures. Pop the cape off, put old Darth in there, shut the lid on him, and he's doing a Death Star trench run trying to stop Luke Skywalker and the rest of those dang X-Wing rebels. Oh, he just got hit and he's tumbling out of the way. <laughs> You can do all that with that, right? As corny as it is. Push the button and you could pop old Darth out just like that or just put him upside down. Whatever you want to do. Put him on top of his TIE Fighter Advanced. Have him standing there all menacing. Yes, I, I would like, I don't know how to incorporate it, but a lightsaber, a little mini lightsaber, something like that. Or heck, just give me an alternate Darth Vader figure. Whatever, I'm sure they'll figure it out. But in either case, yes, it's a very cool looking Darth Vader. Which of course brings us to the final class of today, the transport class. Now you may have seen this vehicle in some recent episodes of The Mandalorian Season 2. Or heck, if you collected Star Wars figures in the early 80s, 
Yeah, you probably had the Imperial Troop Transport. They also made one more recently, but uh, yeah, go for the old one. That's that's the best. Or buy these, right? Lots of little interworking pieces on this, larger scale, and of course that means a larger price. But here it all is out of the packaging, and it's looking pretty snazzy, and it's got a lot of detail on it. It's got a lot of working parts, and it comes with <laughs> two little stormtroopers, right? They all have their little stormtroopiness about them. But I'll tell you this. It's largely an all-white figure. It's got some black accents to really pop out the whole stormtrooper aspect. Odd paint apps, right? Especially in the back right there. But I'll tell you, <laughs> it kind of looks like he's wearing sunglasses. I'm just going to say, it's like a cool-looking stormtrooper. It doesn't really pull out all the details of the mask. So that may be something later down the road to really uh, kind of bring out for these stormtroopers, like the one with the gun. Yes, he's a little bit different. He's got the blaster in hand, but again, I'll say all day, with the great articulation that you can just pop these guys in these little ships and everything else. I mean, it does look like they're wearing a pair of sunglasses. It's hilarious, but you, you get what I'm saying, right? So for the transport, very nice attention to detail once again. Lots of little intricate little parts and pieces move on this thing. I was surprised and kind of looking at it and going, oh, this moves. Oh, wow, this moves too. From the front to the back to the sides. Yeah, you see what I mean. It's got lots of great paint. Even the rub goes on the bottom. It's got wheels so you can zip this thing around. Maybe old Bill Burr is driving it. Who knows, right? But it's got the turrets on the top. So that twists the guns will move up and down. I like that. And then you move your way down here and you can open up the back. And you can see basically, my understanding, it's like a transport, prisoner transport, something like that. So you can see the little chairs where they can be hooked in and you can sit them in there. I'll show you how all that works in just a second. But again, attention to detail is all there. The front part opens up and you can see the cockpit. You got two steering wheels right there, two seats. That means you need two pilots sitting there. And I think that's one of the things I will say for a larger class like this, I really feel like they should have really loaded it up with stormtroopers and whatnot. You got the little nipple cannons right here that will move up and down. Each of these doors open up and I totally dig that right there. So you could put all the little stormtroopers in there. Heck, even on this side, all the little doors open up. Yeah, I'm gonna show you every single one. <laughs> Nothing on the back opens up, which is totally fine, but you just kind of close these up, open these up as you see fit, grab your stormtrooper, put him inside there, and you are ready to rock and roll. I definitely dig the way that looks, but like I said, for a larger class like this, I really do feel like they should have loaded you up with all these little, little mini stormtroopers that would have been ideal. Yes, if you get more sets and everything else, like, I don't know, the Scout Trooper bike, right? You can get all those blind bag packs. You can start doing it yourself if you want. But a few more would have been great. It's got great paint overall, really nice looking. But uh, yeah, I would have liked just a little bit more figures to go with this because it would have really brought it to life. It would have felt like a complete set. Whereas, you know, you got to start piecemealing out. You go for the ATST, you go for this, you go for that. You fill it up yourself. Yes, that's part of the fun of having a collection, but this is one of those where eh, a little bit more, right? You could take the X-Wing pilot, X-Wing Luke, have him as a prisoner, sit him inside. The photos you can achieve on these things are great. I love the detail. It looks like a lived-in world, and that's what they really succeeded in achieving with these brand new Micro Galaxy Squadron sets. Now, here comes the fun part, right? The scalature. So all of these are in around that 196th scale, right? In and around, give or take some of those. But I like that they really paid attention to detail and it all fits, especially with all the little mini figures. Now, you could kind of make the argument that maybe some are a little bit taller than others. Yeah, Saj Ventures looking a little bit tall. But for the most part, I think that those all work, especially in terms of how you fit them with their respective vehicles. Moving on into more of the old school stuff. Now, I promise later on I will have more photos with the older action fleet and whatnot. But today, I got this one for you, and I'm gonna tell you that for the most part, 
These new ones are a little bit bigger than the older Action Fleet vehicles. Those were really never in scale with one another. These are, you can kind of see how the little minifigures are a little bit too big for this particular Stormtrooper head base, you know what I mean? You can still put them in the garbage chute and have some fun, take photos, but these are largely gonna be their own scale. I'm sure some of them will fit here and there, but I'll have more photos on my Instagram and such later on, especially when we look at more of these vehicles. And yes, I do have more coming. Now, one of my favorite aspects, especially with Super Impulse and their micro action figures. I love action figures. For your action figures. This is basically me going to the Black Series and getting that TIE Fighter when that movie came out, walking out of Target like, yes, everyone's gonna love this. The space alone, right? Perfect for my office. But that's what I mean. All these little figures, all these giant vehicles, they work great with larger Star Wars figures. And if you wanted to know the scale for them all, well, look no further. Everything from the retro collection to the vintage to the Power of the Force to the Black Series. This is how Micro Galaxy Squadron scales with both old and new stuff. And for those of you wondering, let's say with Power of the Force and the larger X-Wing compared to the Micro Galaxy Squadron X-Wing, you get the idea. Giant. This was a lot of fun to put together. A lot of fun to look at all these new toys. And I got to tell you that at the end of the day, it just really reminded me of those old commercials right bringing out all the different star wars players pulling the camera back and showing off the collection it's star wars in the palm of your hand and heck i gotta give it to jazzwares these are a lot of fun and will be a lot of fun to collect so that's gonna wrap it up for my look at some of the brand new jazzwares star wars micro galaxy squadron toys and you've heard my thoughts and now i'm interested in yours what do you think about these? Will you be grabbing? Comment below. Let me know. Let's talk everything Micro Galaxy Squadron. And do stay tuned. I will have more looks at some of the other larger vehicles coming soon. And thank you again to Jazzwares for setting these out to give you guys this early fresh look. And I'm going to leave you guys with that. As always, drink some great coffee, eat some great food. But most importantly, remember, leave me a comment down below. Which ship would you like to see them combat next for Wave 2? And when they do... Let me know what you found. I'll talk to you guys soon. Adios.